Joe from Scarecrow Joe Studio. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing. Um, in the intro of this video, what you just saw was a handful of the jack-o'-lantern sculptures that I have created through the years. I've done many, many different variations. Um, and there's still to this day uh, some of my more, more popular videos on how to create paper mache jack-o'-lanterns. In this series of videos um, that I'm creating for you now and these segments coming up, it's going to be all about jack-o'-lanterns, tips and tricks, and some more advanced techniques. There are many, many different variations of jack-o'-lanterns that you can create. And there are many, many tutorials on how to create paper mache jack-o'-lanterns out there on YouTube. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of different types today. Um, one of them is, as you can see in this guy, I did not cut out the eyes yet. I designed the jack-o'-lantern face, and then I uh, basically I sculpted around my design. I intend on cutting these uh, features out um, after I have completed this. I'm almost done with it. As you can see, I have one one area here to cover with my paper mache clay and of course the stem. Um, the other variation of jack-o'-lantern uh, that I'm also going to show you today is creating your design and cutting out your features and then using thin flexible cardboard so just like in my original uh, videos three years ago so that's the two different variations. Um, the armature that I'm going to demonstrate on today is created out of using balloons. Um, so whether you choose to use balloons, paper mache balloons, or the uh, plastic trash bag or grocery bag technique, um, these variations are going to be identical. So let's get into this. All right, one of the very first things that um, I want to mention here is how important it is to have a very strong armature. Whether you have used a balloon, a beach ball, um, a plastic grocery bags for your form, it doesn't matter. You want to make sure that you're putting plenty of strips on here and so that when it dries, and you want to make sure that it dries completely before you move on and doing anything else, um, is to make sure that, you know, you can feel it and there should not be any areas where there's some softness. You should not be able to push in, uh, into your, your form at all. Um, in the very beginning, I would only put on, I don't know, maybe four or five layers now I go like eight to ten layers. I want to make sure that my 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 form is very very strong from the very very beginning. So using this balloon form here, I've determined it is extremely strong. First thing that I'm going to do is draw a circle on the bottom and cut that out. So with a marker, I put a little dot in the center. And then, sort of like a compass, I just draw out some lines, four of them. That gives me a guide, and then I just kind of connect these lines in a circle. And no, is it perfect? No, it is not perfect. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but get it as as even as you possibly can. Um, that's what I would that's what I would say. So I have that drawn out there. I'm ready to go ahead and cut this out. I'm going to use this uh, box cutter blade here and very gently 
cut this section out. All right, as you can see, I've got that uh, hole in the uh, bottom cut out. Um, it, you don't have to have a very big hole. I'm just removing that excess balloon that was in there that popped. You don't have to have a very big hole. I would suggest ha having a hole big enough so that you can reach your hand in there. I have small hands, so I don't need a giant hole or anything. Um, and what I have already determined is that right around the base, you can see I did not get enough strips on there. It's kind of flimsy. So there are one or two things that I can do about this situation. I can stop what I'm doing right now, and I can go ahead and strip mache this bottom like four more times, let it sit and dry. Or there's an alternative, and I like this alternative better um, because it doesn't set me back. Uh, I could still move forward. But before I show you that, what I'm going to do um, is go ahead and create my design. All right, I promise I will get back to that trick and tip. Um, but before I do that again, I'm going to go ahead and create my design. Um, I like to sit it down flat on the table and turn it to see where, what area uh, I would like, what surface area on this balloon I would like to create my design or my jack-o'-lantern face. I like I like this here. It looks nice and even, um, and it's got a good amount of surface here. Now, whether you are going to be cutting out uh, your features and attaching the thin flexible cardboard, which is what I'm going to do on this variation of jack-o'-lantern, or if you're going to not cut it out and apply your paper mache clay around your features, like on this jack-o'-lantern, these steps are the same. You're going to go ahead and design your jack-o'-lantern. All right, so when designing my jack-o'-lanterns, I usually have two markers. One in black, one in red, or you can use green, purple, whatever two colors that you want. I usually start with black, and what I do is I go from the top of where my stem is going to be, and I draw a line straight through the center. The reason I do that is because I want to determine, you know, where the center of the pumpkin is. My central point of reference is always the nose. So from that point there, I draw in that line straight down the middle. And then I'll draw in my nose. Now where the nose is, that's going to help me determine where I'm going to put my eyes. And as you can see, I'm going to have one smaller eye, one bigger eye. My nose is a little bit off kilter and slanted in one direction. And then with the mouth, I usually just draw in like a happy smiling face um, to start out with. And then I go back and I draw in the teeth. And this, you could see, maybe you could see where I started here. And that gives me um, a guide, again, a guide in, on the lower part of where I could put my, my teeth in or my mouth so that it's not going to um, intrude on these other areas or I'm not going to go too wide down here. Um, so after I do that, I go back over uh, with my with the other colored marker in this case it was red because all of this stuff can be very confusing if you don't do this so i go over the areas that i do want to cut out with that other colored of color marker in this case it's red so i'm going to go ahead off camera because i don't think you need to watch me do this and i'm going to cut out my eyes my nose and my mouth all right i've got my facial uh jack-o'-lantern face features here cut out. Um, so on to the next uh, tip here for you, and I think this is very, very important, is before you attach any kind of a stem, and I do have a separate tutorial on just stems, if you wanted to watch that, but we're going to go over some tips and tricks for stems as well. But before you attach the stem, um, or before I attach my stems and before I do any other clay work, what I do 
is I take my paper mache clay and I'm going to put some paper mache, lay in some paper mache clay. Doesn't have to be very thick, um, you know, eighth of an inch, something like that. And it doesn't have to go down very far, maybe an inch to two inches around the perimeter of your jack o' lantern. You also want to make sure that you get paper mache around uh, where the cutout is. So, if you can see that, how I'm pressing in that clay right around that cutout. I don't want any raw uh, newspaper showing at all. So I'm gonna go around and do this. Before I do any kind of other sculpting or anything else, I do this because I wanna make sure that the base of my jack-o'-lantern is very, very strong. And especially this particular one because it was flimsy, as you could see. I can easily press it in there. So I'm going to layer on this clay. I'm going to sit it in front of a fan. If you have a, uh, this is just a coffee, you know, coffee uh, container here, plastic coffee container. Um, that's going to really come in handy, you know, to hold your, uh, Hold your pumpkin on. So I'm just gonna continue on doing this here all the way around the perimeter of my pumpkin. All right, as you can see, I have that layer of clay all the way around the base of my pumpkin. And I made sure that I got some clay around the cutout so there's no uh, raw newspaper showing in there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a mixture of flour and water to a thin pancake-like batter consistency and a paintbrush. And I'm gonna take that paste and I'm gonna layer on a little bit of the paste here, adding some pressure. And as you can see, it's adding moisture to this clay and it's also helping to smooth it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that all the way around and inside. I'm kind of just dabbing it inside, adding a little bit of pressure to smooth it. I'm going to take a spoon. This is just a plastic uh, spoon. I'm going to smooth it out even more. I really want to make sure that I am smoothing in um, the ridge here that I may have created so that when I actually go to apply more clay after this is dry, I won't have like this bump here um, to kind of try to match wet clay onto it, if that makes any kind of sense. Paying a lot of attention to really smooth out any kind of ridge that I may have created down here. Doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to add more clay to this thing and build up the features and this is just the bottom it's absolutely not the focal point of our piece just going in here and uh making sure i just have a nice cut out circle here that does have the clay on it i'm going to use my my fingers to kind of shape it a little bit make sure that i have the clay on little bit on the inside so for this little uh, for this little portion of the video this jack-o-lantern is done for right now um, I'm going to put this in front of a fan and allow it to dry tomorrow it'll be dried completely it's not very thick clay um, so you know 12 hours 12 to 24 hours. This will be dry completely. All right, let's go back to this guy here. Um, and as you recall, this is a jack-o'-lantern that I drew the features, facial features in, did not cut them out, did not apply the thin flexible uh, pieces of cardboard in there, around there, like I do with the other ones. He's still gonna be hollow. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut out these features using my blade. 
All right, I've got my uh, my little cutouts uh, cut out. <laughs> my facial features are cut out. Now I want to show you. This is one of the the flaws on uh, doing it this way, as opposed to uh, cutting out your your features like I did in the other jack o' lantern, and then um, applying the three dimensional pieces of uh, thin flexible cardboard on the on the rim. A um, couple of different reasons why I think this is can be a flawed method. Number one is that when you apply that thin flexible piece of cardboard, it gives you a guide because it's going to protrude out a little bit from your, your cutouts. So it's going to give you a guide on your thickness. Um, the most vulnerable areas on a jack paper mache jack-o'-lantern is anywhere that you have cut out um, because you don't have as much clay on those surface areas as opposed to say on the back where it's all clay there are no openings so that's one of the reasons um, so you have that guide lets you know how thick you want it to get um, now when you don't have that guide of the thin flexible cardboard you really have to pay attention to making sure, and let me turn it this way so you could see, really making sure that you have built up enough thickness here, I'd say at least quarter inch, half an inch is even better, um, around your cutouts um, to ensure that you're, you know, it, it's, it's going to be stable. It won't be easily broken. Um, paper, now, paper mache clay, it, it's very strong, it's very durable, but it's not bulletproof. The other flaw that I, that I believe uh, in this using this method here is that when you cut out your features, you have this raw cardboard that remains. Um, I don't like that. Uh, I, you know, maybe, maybe some people, they, they leave it like that and, and they're okay with it. So what I like to do is I'm going to take little bits of my clay and all around anywhere in my cutouts where I see raw newspaper, I'm going to apply some paper mache clay. I want to cover those areas. It looks better when it's covered um, after painting it because if you just paint it like that, there's going to be areas, especially... Let me see if I could tilt this here so you could see it um, right around in the mouth here. There's a gap. Turn it this way. You can see that there's a gap here where my uh, my clay has pulled away from some of my from my uh, armature, my sh newspaper stripped armature. So if I just went ahead and leave it like that and painted it, you're going to see that. And I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the time and I'm going to apply just a thin layer of clay all around inside of my cutout so that no newspaper is showing. So if you choose to use this method, that's what I highly, highly recommend that you do. All right, so I've taken the time here and uh, I put in a thin layer of clay. Um, all around my cutouts here and I realize this is it's time consuming okay to do this it is time consuming but you have to take the time to do it if you're using this method um, if you do not then it's just not gonna look good it's not gonna look right um, I still have I still have to do the mouth um, and the nose but I have completed the eyes here so my next step would be Again, it's, it's to take my uh, mixture of, of flour and water, so my paper mache paste, and a paintbrush, and I want to go in because this jack-o'-lantern is dry, except for this wet clay that I've applied. And you could certainly do that. That's not a problem whatsoever. Um, but you want to make sure that you do uh, get some paste in there with the paintbrush, Number one, 
to add some moisture to ensure that it is going to adhere or stick to your dry clay and also to smooth it and blend it into that dry clay so it doesn't look you know because if you just left it like that um, it's not gonna look it's not gonna look good at all so you want to make sure you know that it looks like one cohesive piece in the end and uh, you know you could just take your your finger like I'm doing here and I'm using my finger to kind of just smooth smooth it in a little bit more um, I have some various basic uh, sculpting tools plastic ones you know you could use that kind of stuff uh, if you've watched my other videos then you'll know what I'm talking about I, I always talk about my little sculpting tools I'll show you one this is one of them um, this is another one so it allows me to just kind of get in there and really after I've applied the paste and smoothed it in with my paintbrush it allows these little tools allow me to get in there and smooth it out even more so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up I'm gonna do smooth out the uh, the other the other eye here where I added the clay and then I'm gonna go in off camera and finish up the, the rest of that there he's just about done I mean this method it's it's a great method to use um, but like I said to me it does have its flaws so moving along, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit here. Um, I have one little section in the back here of this jack-o'-lantern to apply clay to, and then the stem here. But I'm going to use this as a demonstration on, on really how to smooth uh, paper mache clay. Um, so the clay that I'm using is made from cellulose fiber installation and uh, there's lots of people that like this clay um, and lots of people that hate this clay um, I do have tutorials two different uh, tutorials on the channel here on how to make this paper mache clay using the cellulose fiber insulation, um, making a big back batch out of it, and then also making a small batch out of it. Um, so if you're interested in that and making this type of clay, uh, go on there. It's pretty simple. Go on there and check it out so you can make this clay. This is my preferred type of clay to use. Um, you know, if you've, again, if you've watched some of my other tutorials and I mentioned clay, um, I use this type of clay for probably 90, 90% of all of my paper mache art that involves clay. Um, the main reason that I use this clay with the cellulose fiber insulation is because it's extremely cheap. The, the fiber insulation. You can get a big bale of it at your big box uh, hardware store um, for about I don't know, anywhere from 12 to 12 to 15 dollars depending on your location I suppose and where you're buying it at. Um, and you can make a lot a lot a lot of paper mache art uh, using that as your paper product for your clay so that's one of the main reasons why I prefer the cellulose fiber insulation um, and I'm gonna stop right now on that train of thought and show you here so just like on the other pumpkin the other jack-o'-lantern where I uh, cut out the hole in the bottom and then I clayed over uh, around here I did the same on this one so that was the first thing that I did and then I let that dry so you can see what that looks like so I'm getting down on the edge here my my very last little panel and I'm just sort of overlapping in that area where it meets that dry clay on the on the end so just wanted to show you that alright going back to the cellulose fiber insulation you can make a lot 
of a uh, lot of art using that. Um, and if you are planning on making a lot of paper mache art using paper mache clay, um, that is the most economical way um, to do that is to use that fiber insulation. One of the downfalls that I hear a lot and why people, a lot of people don't like it is because it's very, very fibrous. Um, but you can get around that a couple of ways is by um, making sure that your clay consistency is a little bit more damp or ho holding a little bit more moisture than what you probably normally would if you're using uh, any kind of other paper um, product such as toilet paper for your clay. Um, that's one of the things. The other thing that I do is what you're seeing me do right now again with the paste um, and a paintbrush. So I applied, you know, I applied the, the ridge here and I'm just taking dipping my uh, paintbrush into the paste and I'm using that to smooth out to smooth out that clay. On my first set of videos on how to make the paper mache jack-o-lanterns I didn't use that method where I smoothed it out using some paste. Um, I just applied the uh, I applied the clay and then I used uh, you know, a, a sculpting tool, plastic sculpting tool, and right over, so you can see this area, I applied the paste. This area, I did not, so you can see how it's a lot more rough than where I applied the paste. So what I used to do is, without applying the paste, I would just use the tool and try to s smash it down and smooth it out that way. And that works fine, it does. Um, but it takes a little bit more effort, in my opinion. So you can see the difference here. I just smooth that out, this area, without adding any more paste, and it works. That's fine. This area is already a lot smoother than that, than this down here, by just using the, the paste over it. And by using the paste over it, again, it's helping to smooth it. It's introducing a little bit more moisture into it. And then you can go over it. What I do is I, I then go over it again uh, if I want it extra smooth or as smooth as I could possibly get it um, with a sculpting tool. You can also uh, spoons, plastic spoons, the back side of it um, works really, really well for anything that's round, like a pumpkin. That works really, really great for that. Um, so that is smoothing out uh, paper mache clay, uh, specifically paper mache clay with uh, the, fi the cellulose fiber insulation. And of course, you could use this method for smoothing paper mache clay, uh, no matter what type of your paper ingredient is, whether it's toilet paper or uh, any, any kind of other paper mache product. Um, you could still do this and smooth it out. Um, I'm picking this up now and kind of just blending in that bottom edge. You can see me doing that with the paste and the, the paintbrush here, the very bottom edge. If you want something that's really, really super smooth, paper mache is not the medium for it. That's just my opinion. Um, for Halloween art, I think it's great because um, it holds a lot of texture. So a lot of the art that I make, I want it to hold a lot of texture. Um, so I'm just gonna smooth this out. This is smoothing paper mache clay. So my little tip on how to do that. And then once you get it all smooth, I still need the bottom there. I'm not gonna forget about that. To blend it in, I'm just gonna go back with my uh, paintbrush. This is, again, dry clay and wet clay. So I don't wanna have a ridge or, or, you know, make it look like a, there's a stop and a start area. I want it to look cohesive. So this is how I'm going to accomplish that. Just going into that ridge area with some more paste and my brush and smoothing that over.
So you can get it pretty smooth. I'm going to bring this finished guy out um, as an example of, you know, what it looks like, you know, when you smooth it out, as smooth as you can get it. And this is, this is it, really. So you can so, still see there is some, some texture in there. It's not completely smooth. But uh, it looks pretty good, you know, especially for pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns. I think it's a great product. Um, so just keep that in mind. And this, this is one of those jack-o'-lanterns where um, I did the cutouts and I applied uh, the thin, flexible cardboard before, before sculpting. All right, so this has been allowed to dry um, overnight, and it is completely dry. Um, you can tell by, well, you should not be able to be to stick your fingernail into the clay. If you could stick your fingernail into the clay, um, give it some more time. You could tell now. I have a really solid base that we're going to shift gears here for a second and um, we're going to move on to creating the stem for this guy. Um, it, I do have a tutorial out there on the channel that has, uh, it's, it's all to do with stems. There's two basic types of stems on that tutorial. And uh, really, those are the two types of stems that I uh, create for my jack-o'-lanterns. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit more about that. So there are a couple of other tips and tricks I didn't share with you on that video because I didn't really know them back then. Um, and I've just, you know, sort of figured it out along the way. Um, that I'd like to take the time to share with you now. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to move on here, shift gears a little bit, and create a stem for this guy. All right, for the base of your stem, um, or for the base of my stems, I commonly use, still, cardboard tubes. Um, what I have found is the cardboard tubes that you, uh, that you will come across in um, aluminum foil rolls, and like uh, plastic wrap, food plastic wrap rolls. The center tube is a thin tube in diameter, and it's very, very strong. Like you would, you would really need to forcefully try to bend it or make an indentation in it. So these are really great. Um, the only problem with that is that the diameter is small. Because, of course, you know, you've got the aluminum foil and the food plastic wrap wrapped around them very tight. And so they need to be small for that purpose. Um, the other type is uh, what you would find in paper towels, rolls of paper towels, and toilet paper. This is a paper towel tube. Um, now, these are the exact opposite of this. Um, they're uh, thicker in diameter. And also, on that note, they're not very sturdy. So if you're going to use, or you need to use, a tube like this that's a uh, bigger diameter, um, say for, that's what I used for this guy, something that was bigger in diameter there, because um, he's a larger jack-o'-lantern, then what I suggest is stuffing your tube with some newspaper. So first things first, let's go ahead and uh, measure out the, the top here. Um, on this jack-o'-lantern, I am going to use the um, aluminum foil tube. All right, so I have a smaller um, one that I have used, cut down and used, but it's the same type of tube just a little easier for me to work with. So I'm going to, you know, center up. Um, typically, you, you're going to want to have your stem in the center of, of the jack-o'-lantern top. Take your, uh, I take my marker here, and I just, I make a mark around there. And this is very, very thick. 
lots and lots of layers in there. So I'm going to very, very carefully with my blade, I'm going to cut, if you can see where the mark is, I'm going to cut a little bit outside of that mark. And the reason for that, I'll show you in just a few minutes. So, all right, that's cut out. Hold on to that. You'll want that. Um, now, the reason that I've cut it out a little bit bigger or outside of my mark, um, that is so I can easily hot glue it into place and position it. I can, I can position it to the side or, you know, pushing it forward or backwards. So I'm just leaving myself some space in there. Um, second thing I want to do here, and this has not changed very much, is I want to want to go ahead and ideally I want to insert my tube at least an inch to an inch and a half inside my jack-o-lantern. Um, you don't want to position it way up here where you have very little connection underneath. Um, but you don't want to position it way down there so that when you look through the eyes, uh, especially if you have one like this, where the eyes are, the cutouts are very, very big, when you're looking through that eye hole that you could see that cardboard tube. So keep those two things in mind. So I, I want to position, so I'm going to go, let's see, that's about, that's about an inch and a half or so right there. So that's, that's my mark on, on where I'm going, how far I'm going to insert it. Now, the other mark I'm going to make is, and I'm going to kind of position my, uh, my tube off to the side like this. So the other mark that I want to make is where I want to cut my tube or how tall I want my tube or my stem to be. And I'm going to go about right here. So with that mark, I've got two marks. The mark where I'm going to insert it, and that's my guide on where to glue it. And then the mark on how tall I want my stem. So I'm going to go ahead and cut right here. Across. All right, now I have my little cap here. That's going to be the cap for my jack-o'-lantern. Okay, so that'll be the top. I'll cap it off. But to ensure that this thing is going to stay really solid, because I'm not going to strip mache it, I need a cap for the bottom too. So I have this piece of corrugated cardboard. Um, you want a corrugated cardboard, not uh, not the thin flexible cardboard. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure around the tube. Um, it's easier to cut out if you go in a corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a pair of sturdy scissors and cut that out. That's going to serve as my base for my stem. So this is new. I did not show you this in uh, my previous stem tutorial uh, way back. What was that? Three years ago or something. So that's there's my base right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hot glue this onto my base. That's very hot. I'm going to let that sit. Um, one thing I do recommend is that when you're working with any kind of hot glue, have a little tiny container of cold water. That way, you know, if you're anything like me, I, I will get this stuff on my hands um, or on my fingers, and then you could quickly dip your finger right into that cold water, and it'll save you a lot of pain and agony. Um, trust me, you can get burn very very badly with hot glue all right so that is set up uh, for I don't know a few seconds for good measure I'm gonna go in around my stem which is the base of my we're going to be the base of my stem and uh, put another line of hot glue around that and uh, I'm gonna make sure that this is completely cooled before I handle it this is completely cold cooled um, and set up. I can handle it. Not a problem. Now before I glue this in, um, and you're definitely going to want to do this if you're using 
a paper towel tube or a toilet paper tube that's very flimsy. This is extremely important. We want to create stability and the way to do that is to stuff your tube with some newspaper. So I've got some squares of uh, newspaper that I've crumbled up and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to stuff my tube here. And what this does is that when you are applying clay, and especially if you're intending on making a very elaborate stem for your jack-o'-lantern, um, this is going to help provide stability so that it won't collapse. And that's extremely, extremely important. So I've got that uh, shoved in there pretty good. Maybe one more piece. Let's see. Now, on this, because I have such a wide opening here, I can easily, with this bottom cap glued on, insert that from in the top and hot glue it. Now, if you find that you cannot do that, just go through the bottom. So, insert your top right through the bottom, just like that. And then you could go ahead and hot glue that in place. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to hold this, position it on where I want it to be, and take my hot glue and just hot glue it in place. So that's all hot glued in place and once again I have a, I have a lot of hot glue around there because um, I want to make sure that it's really secure. Um, once again, I'm going to allow that to completely cool. I don't want it to be tacky or sticky at all. I want it to be completely cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and hot glue on my little cap here on the top. All right, I have that uh, secured. I've got my little cap hot glued on. That's still very hot. Um, my little cap here... I glued it on in the concave position instead of uh, the flat, this area here, because the concave position gave me more of a surface area, a connection to the tube. Whereas if I had flipped it and it wasn't on the concave area facing down to glue, it was, you see all these ridges and everything in there, um, just from the newspaper paper mache, strip mache. It would have been very difficult to get a really good connection with the hot glue. All right, while I'm waiting for that to cool, um, because this jack-o'-lantern example, I'm going to use the thin flexible cardboard and create my guide around all the features. Rule of thumb for me is uh, I want at least a half an inch strips half an inch is going to give me a really good guide here because I'm going to cut my strips to fit in there individually so you know I kind of this has not changed from my uh, initial tutorial on this so I kind of line it up hold my mark right there cut it And then on the very edge, and I like to use, excuse me, I'm going to go this way. So I want to, I want to run my line of hot glue on the, the graphic side of the thin flexible cardboard. And this is, a, this is just a cereal box that I'm using. So I'm going to run that hot glue, beat a hot glue there. I'm going to trim off a little bit. It seems like it's a little too long. So running my bead of hot glue right like that and right on the edge being very careful because hot glue is hot and that should take I don't know a few seconds to set up that half inch right there or you know a quarter of an inch I wouldn't go any less than a quarter of an inch that's going to be your guide on how thick you want your clay. Because you want a good amount of clay. You don't want to, you know, so much where it becomes uh, 
unstable and difficult to work with because there's a trick that I'm going to show you in the next segment of this tutorial on how to pre-sculpt um, so that way you don't have to use so much clay initially um, but anyway that's going to be a guide for you now there are several other little tips and tricks here um, along these lines um, you could go ahead and do all of your cutouts the same way you know line them up hot glue each individual piece just with that, you know, quarter inch thin flexible cardboard. But if you want some areas to kind of stand out a little bit more, say you want to peek um, on this eye here. So I'm going to, the way I'm going to create that is I'm going to cut a thicker piece of cardboard here. A thicker piece of cardboard. I'm gonna line that up and let's say I want to taper it right so I want I want this area up here or the top to be a lot thicker so the way to do that is you're just gonna go ahead and taper your 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 piece of of cardboard so pre-measure just like you normally would just like I did with the other piece so about right there I'm gonna cut that pre-measure and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this piece here and I'm gonna cut it sort of like in a diagonal and so you could see here how this let me go ahead and glue it um, be very careful on the tip here I really should have uh, left myself more area on the tip flip it and I'm gonna carefully glue that in there so you can see from the side here How by using that method, by tapering that, this is going to come to a peak. I'm going to do the same thing on this side because I want that to kind of come to a peak as well. So there you have it. <clears throat> Once again with my glue. You can see how that, uh, let me tilt this camera up a little bit. You can see how that kind of protrudes. It's going to stick out a little bit. When I go to start doing my clay work, I'm obviously, this is, this could be problematic right here. So what I want to do with this is I kind of want to just trim that down a little like that. I'm going to let these taper. Hopefully you can see that. There you go. So I'm going to have a little bit more bulk down here, a lot more bulk up here. That's one way to create a more three-dimensional uh, feel to your, your jack-o'-lantern. Um, and you can do that with the nose. You can do that with sections of the mouth. If you really wanted your... the uh, the grin here to really be more prominent, then that's the same type of effect that you would use for that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna leave this as it is. I want one big eye sticking out like that. I might taper off the nose a little bit. Um, and then I'm just gonna do regular size, um, the size and finish off the mouth and uh, the eyes here. All right, so I have all of my uh, thin flexible cardboard pieces glued in. Um, looks silly. Uh, I, I understand that. Um, but it won't when we're done. Um, just remember that these are meant to be guides for when, you when you're laying on your clay. 
So what I suggest even farther to make sure that these are in there secure while you're sculpting is after you have glued them in and they've cooled, go around the edges of all of your inserts on the outside here and put another uh, line of hot glue. All right, so here he is. Here's the uh, jack-o'-lantern that we've gotten through so far today in this segment. Um, we've done a lot of work. Um, we're going to finish up this segment at this point and come in next segment, start our sculpting process. And I have a ton of tips and tricks and uh, different things coming up in that video to show you some things. Pre-sculpting, how to add some separate elements such as eyeballs, arms, different things like that, and texturing is all coming up in the following segments uh, in addition to this one. So uh, stay tuned for that, and uh, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.